Hello. Hey. How's it going? Today, I'm going to teach you a little something about systems of linear equations. Now you may be sitting there asking yourself, why? Why must I sit here and listen to this boring man drone on and on about systems of linear equations? That's a good question, and I'll tell you why. Because one, unless Mr. Neal is your algebra teacher, I'm probably a lot cooler than your algebra teacher. Just saying. And two, because it's important. Systems of linear equations, or SLE, as nobody likes to call them, do a lot for us. Are imperative for business calculations and other business calculations. So I think the moral of the story here is that if you're going to do anything with business, you need to know about systems of linear equations. Let's get cracking. So, the real question is, so what is a system of linear equations? Basically, what happens is, label your axis. You have a graph, right? And on this graph, there are two lines. One line, two lines. In most of the problems you're going to get, they're going to cross. But sometimes they don't. Sometimes, if the lines are parallel, that means if they have the same slope, they never cross unless they're the same line. And if it's the same line, they're, they're the same line. So they're always touching, always, because they're the same line. They're because they're the same. Because the equations are the same, so they're always the same. Because they're the same line. Because they're the same line. No matter where you are, they're the same line, so they're always the same. Because they're the same line. So you have infinite solutions. Infinite solutions? What, what's a solution? What are you trying to, why are you trying to confuse me? I'm not trying to confuse you. I'll show you what I mean. So you see these two lines, right? They cross. This point right here, this is the little of the solution. The, the place where they touch. Because, okay, if you're going along the x, on this line, and you're going along the x, on this line, right? When you get to here, and you plug in whatever x value that is, you're going to get the same for both the lines. That's why they touch. I will elaborate. Let's say you've got two machines. Your first machine... Every second, it goes along and it makes sound. So for every second, every x, the number of things it makes, the y value, increases. So, it starts off and it makes three of these things. And it goes... And it makes more and more and more and more until eventually it's just, it's making a bunch of, it makes like a gazillion things. The company is overstocked and they have to lay off people. It's all sad and no way happy. It would look a, little, look a little something like this. First of all, we decided that it started off and it made three things. So, you're, so if you look at the equation of, of a line as y equals mx plus b, right? The b would be three because when it starts at time zero, which is where you start because it hasn't done anything yet, that's just how many it starts, starts with, the equation is three. So, bam. Three. What is that? That's the y-intercept. So, b is the y-intercept, so b equals three. So on our first line, it's going to be plus three. The next thing we have to know is m, the slope. For each second that passes, each x is going to prove out three more things. So it, it increases by three for every one. So it's three. So if you're looking at rise over run, it's three over one, so the slope is three. And that's your first line. You can think of that as your first machine. So, let's see what this looks like. You're going to have to give me some liberties because obviously I'm not a graphing calculator. I can't make things perfect. Right, so this is about what our line's going to look like. Except, 
you probably made your arrows look better because you're just so awesome. The second machine will start off making ten things. But the machine works a little different. For every second that passes, it makes one less. As we discussed before, how many it starts with, that's the y. It will be plus 10. And what's a slope? Well, for each second, it makes one less. So that's the negative 1. You don't have to write the 1. x. Uh, and so now we're going to graph this. Over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1. Look at that. Hey, look at that. They cross. In most of the problems you're going to get, they're going to cross. What does this mean? Well, if you think of it in the example that we just used with the machines, right, this means that at a certain point, at some time, so sometime after they start, if this is the solution here we talked about where the lines cross, this looks like it's at two seconds. Okay? So at two seconds, these machines are making the exact same number of little plastic duties. And so you say, oh, okay, that's the solution. And believe it or not, we just solved the system of linear equations graphically because we know what the solution is, and this is a graph. You're going to have to give me some liberties because obviously I'm not a graphing calculator. Oh, the solution is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Not a graphing calculator. 2, 8. Because if the x is 2, not a graphing calculator, right? And, the, and you put, so you put 2 in to both these equations, and you get 8. Not a graphing calculator, but that's our graph. But what if our graph lied to us? Hmm? Not a graphing calculator. How do we solve it without the graph? What if we don't want to draw the lines? Hmm. Teacher Liam, there's another way to do it. I'll show you how. And it's called solving it algebraically. Which makes sense, because you're in algebra. How do we find the answer, how do we find the answer or the solution? to the system of linear equations. Let Liam, there are two different equations, you've got two variables, how do you solve for any of it? Hey, whoa, whoa, calm, okay? Everything is going to be all right, I promise. Guaranteed! So the first step, what you're going to do, is you're going to want to isolate one of the variables. That's fancy speak for, you've got to get either the x or the y alone, by themselves. And how you do that, usually, is through a system called Elimination. Here's what you do. You look at your equation and you say, I can multiply an entire equation and it's still the same. Because if you do the, the same thing to two sides of an equation, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change. They're still the same. It's allowed. You haven't broken the laws of mathematics. Guaranteed. You're a good mathematics citizen. I do. So we can multiply these two equations by anything we want. You don't have to do both. You can do it just one at a time. And then after that, you can add them together because if someone decides that they go on the same graph, you're talking about the same x and the same y, and so you can just add them together or subtract them or whatever. So you say, hey, look at that. There's a y by itself and a y by itself. I bet I can just get rid of those. And here's how you do it. You take y equals 3x plus 3. So now you have your second equation, y equals negative x plus 10. How do I eliminate the y's? Well, here you go. You can just take this entire bottom equation, multiply it by negative 1. Poof! It's math magic. Suddenly, you can add these two equations together. The y's cancel out, and there's 0. The 3x three, three plus x, that's 4x, and positive 3 minus 10, that's negative 7. You now have an equation with only one variable. It's math magic. You have to do, so then you just have to solve it. So you just add the 7 over equals 4x. X, you got to divide this side by 4. That's 7 over 4. Bam, bam, equals x. Oh, look at that. Yes, I'm done. I found it. Look at I found x. Isn't that the point of algebra? You find x? Sort of. Basically, you're halfway done. So, now you have your x. So you know where, sideways, in which way, where the two lines are going to cross. But, since the solution is a 
point, it's the actual spot where they cross, you also need to know how high it is. In other words, you also need to know the Y. But, 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 Liam, we already took out the Y. Yes, you did already take out the Y. But, you still have your original equations. Just because you've added them and stuff doesn't mean they're, you know, doesn't mean they're forever changed. So here's what you gotta do. You gotta hold on to this. You gotta go over here and you prepare yourself for your answer by writing little brackets on a little comma. A lot of people like to do that. So you say seven fourths. Oh, I know that's an X. But there's a hole in my life. There's something missing here. That is correct. So now what you have to do is you have to choose one of these equations. I know, it's a tough decision. But usually, it won't matter. But maybe one will be easier than the other. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the second value that you found out, because you're so awesome, you already figured out what the, X, what the X is, and you have to substitute it, not plug in, substitute it, not plug in, not plug in, substitute it into this, or this equation, uh, and solve for this little doodad here that we in the base like to call a Y. I'm going to take my X, 7 fourths, and substitute, not plug in, substitute, it into one of these equations. I'm going to do this bottom one because I'm cool like that. So you see how I took the x and replaced it with the 7 fourths, which is what I found here. So now we solve that. Solve this equation for y. So that's y equals negative 7 fourths. Um, and you're going to have to add a 10 to 7 fourths. So what you're going to want to do is to rewrite it as a fraction over fourths. So if you multiply this by 4 over 4, and I know it's kind of running out, I'm sorry. Multiply that by 4 over 4, then it's going to be 40 fourths. So that will be y equals, and then since this is negative, it's like 40 minus 7 over 4. So what's 40 minus 7? 40 minus 7 is 33. So it's going to be 33 fourths. 33 fourths. And this, this is what you've labored so hard for. This is your solution. This is the golden key to this systems of linear equations. And you're done. Good job. Good job, team. High five. Ooh. Good point, Mom. It's a good point. You're not done. As, your, as my mother reminds me, you, now that you have your solution, you should uh, check it to make sure you didn't make any mistakes. So the whole principle behind the, the systems of equation and the solution is that when you plug this point, not plug in, you, when you substitute this x and this y, and you get an answer, um, it's going to be the same for both of these equations. So this is the only point that exists on both of these lines. So we have to, we're going to test that right now. 33 fourths plus 3 times 7 fourths plus 3. First off, uh, I'm going to subtract the 3 over. That's going to be 12 fourths plus 33 fourths. You see this is negative 12 fourths because I multiplied this by 4 over 4. So that, I can, so that I can subtract it from this. Equals, and I'm going to just multiply this over, 21 fourths. You see, because I multiplied this by, this happens, and nothing cancels out here, so. So, if we subtract 12 from 33, that's going to be, what's 12 minus, what's 33 minus 12? Not a graphing calculator. It's 20, 20, 21? It's going to be 21. That's 21 fourths equals 21 fourths. Yay! You can put a big check mark and a smiley face. Guaranteed! Because it works, and that's happy for you. Unless the second one doesn't work, and that would be bad for you. So now, have, so now you have to test the second line. The second line is y equals negative x plus 10. So now we have to substitute, not plug in. So now, 
Uh, I'm gonna subtract the ten. Because I'm feeling just dapper today. So I'm gonna multiply this by four by four, so that it can be in fourths. So that's gonna be thirty-three fourths, which came from above right here. Minus, because you have to subtract it over, forty fourths equals negative seven fourths. But does it? So yes, 33 minus 40 is negative 7. And then over 4 equals negative 7 fourths. Yeah. It's math magic. Ah, it works. Look at that. It's beautiful. This point works for both of these lines. It makes me so happy. And you're done. Good job. Good job, team. High five. Ooh.